Well, thank you very much, Sean. I'm very excited to be here because I think this is a brilliant uh, uh, campaign or activity, or whatever it is. Um, I run a company called Happy, which uh, creates happy workplaces. And it's a lot easier than you might think. So I want to give you one of our core principles. Would you agree with the statement, people work best when they feel good about themselves? Hands up if you'd agree with that. Yeah? OK, if that's true, what should be the main focus of management in an organisation? Making people feel good about themselves. Hands up again, how many of you that is the main focus of management in your organisation? OK, Mark, I expect you to put your hand up here. <laughs> <laughs> OK, so there's a scattering of some of you. I want you to take half a minute and turn to your neighbour and answer the question, how would your organisation be different if that was the main focus of management in your organisation? 30 seconds on that question. things? Yes? How many think it would make the organisation more productive? Yes. I mean, because this might sound a bit hippie-ish, making workplaces happy. Um, and you'll have people saying, no, it's about profits, it's about sales, that's what, what to be focused on. But let me give you an example of uh, one of the UK's biggest restaurant chains, which decided to research what it was that actually led to sales and profits. They had 250 different branches and they correlated everything they could find, location, qualifications, all those kinds of things, and they came up with one factor which correlated most closely with growth in sales and profits. Can you guess what it is? You probably can from the event we're at. It was how happy staff said they were in the annual staff survey. It was the closest correlation to the commercial success of the company. They even, for a while, bonused their managers on how happy staff said they were, rather than on, on sales and profits. Um, and there's a whole bunch of research on this. The Financial Times looked at the performance of the best workplaces over five years and found that if you invested £100 in the stock market, it was worth £132 in your average FTSE company, but £166 if you'd invested in the best workplaces. The McLeod report to government last year showed that those who have engaged, motivated staff who feel valued, um, well, the average over a period of time growth in the company is around 20%. The average fall in the demotivated companies is around 30%. It actually makes a real difference. But, of course, it's not just about the top of the companies. It's not just about senior management, because each of us has an effect on the happiness of our workplace. Each of us, you, you probably heard the BBC program this morning where they went into a coffee shop and bought a coffee for somebody and saw it ripple a little bit. Now, whether that works with strangers is open to question, but it definitely works in the workplace. If you do a favour to somebody, if you're nice to somebody, you can see that ripple. So another half minute with your neighbour. What can you do tomorrow to make your workplace a happier place? What can you individually do? Half a minute on that. <laughs> Has everybody got somebody they are going to, something they're going to do tomorrow? Yes? Good. Stick by that. Um, there's lots of great ideas on the Action for Happiness website. I'll take action point number eight, which is find your strength and play to it. Um, uh, 
Now, Gallup has done research on this. It's asked millions of people a simple question. Did you do today what you were best at? Guess what percentage say yes to that? One, somebody said over there. It's slightly better than that. It's about, it's about 20%. I.e., 80% of us are not doing what we're really great at. You know, and think how much more motivated, how much happier we'd be if we were. There are all sorts of other ideas that uh, I'd like to throw out to you. Create a no-blame culture and celebrate mistakes in your organisation. Um, recruit people for attitude, for you know how positive and supportive they are of others. And one that we do is let people choose their manager. How would you feel if you could choose who was your manager in your organisation? If you can't do it in your organisation, I'd suggest proposing it to, to them, you know, because you know best who, who, would, who would support and nurture you best. And there's lots of great ideas out there on how we can create happy workplaces, and I want to encourage you all to do so. Thank you.